Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Select Views. I'm Sam I did the NG doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Blasting News, the Conservative Daily Post, the Ban Passing Time. Well, I'm here today with a bunch of news, as always, and uh, while people trickle in, I wish to remind everybody that this is listener supported. That means that you right now getting this absolutely free. I don't get paid a nickel for doing it. However, I think that it matters. And if you feel the news that you're not getting anywhere else, insight that you're not getting in other places, if, if you feel like that matters, please donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can do, do so through PayPal. And all the money you give to me, I put into another show. I put into a better show. I put into maybe getting the internet back in my studio like I used to have. Um, here's what we've got to cover today, friends. This is from um, AOL. This just struck me, the irony of this. I could not get it out of my head when I saw it today. AOL, Biden, we're undoing, no, we're undergoing, excuse me, a battle for the soul of the nation. You know what's really funny about that? Biden has harmed the soul of the nation during the entire eight years that he was in office with Obama. The soul of the nation has been trampled, destroyed, and the morale of the entire country has never been lowered. The damage that Biden did with Obama to this country may take forever to undo, if it can even be completely undone. And yet he's going to sit there and preach to us about the soul of the nation. It's like the devil complaining about the condition of heaven. I've never seen anything like it. Former Vice President Joe Biden took to Twitter on Monday and posted a message to Mark Dar Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Now, you got to remember, um, as the conservative Daily Post has shown, look it up. You've got people out there. The NWACP is trying to say that global warming is a human rights, civil rights issue. Now, keep in mind, global warming isn't happening. You can look it up. The planet hasn't warmed in 19 years. 19. Look it up. It's easy. You can Google or you wouldn't be watching. And yet, when blacks were legitimately treated horribly during the civil rights era, it really happened. We've got the NAACP out here comparing global warming, which isn't happening, to that. So, I mean, politicians never miss a chance to use the name of a, a fallen hero uh, to push their agenda. And that's what we're seeing here. If you doubt me, take a look. Dr. King said that change comes through continuous struggle, Biden tweeted. As we celebrate his legacy today, we're once again living through a battle to the soul of the, for the soul of the nation. We'll win this battle by following his example, standing up, getting involved, and demanding that our voices be heard. Well, the trouble is, Mr. Biden, we have already heard your words. Your words have been disproven by Climate Gate. Your words have been disproven by all the science that isn't paid for by the people that need global warming to appear real. We've heard you. And we know that you are lying. So please quit comparing yourself to Dr. King, who did not lie. Hillary Clinton tweeted, those words from Dr. King also come to my mind and attached one of King's memorial, memorable quotes, when our days become dreary with low hovering clouds of despair. And when our nights become darker than a thousand midnights, let us remember that there is a creative force in the universe working to pull down the gigantic mountains of evil, a power that is able to take away and take out of the way, no way transform dark yesterdays into bright tomorrows. Well, the trouble is, they're using King's words to promote an absolute known falsehood. It's a known lie. The creative force fighting evil is not somebody who promotes stealing money in the name of a global warming phenomenon that was not happening. It says Dr. King was 26 when the Montgomery bus boycott began, Obama wrote. He started small, rallying others who believed their efforts mattered, pressing on through challenges and doubts to change the world for the better. A permanent inspiration for the rest of us to keep moving towards justice. About this is the very people that are talking about justice and promoting a better world 
are the very people that have worked tirelessly, tirelessly to make our world a living hell. I had to point that out. They can't, the irony can't be lost. Our friends, look at this, Daily Mail. Time travel is technically possible, says physicists. But you'll only be able to go backwards. Now, that's not quite as fun as going forward, but I think given the option, that's, that's the direction most people would like to go in. Um, there are some topics that I am just drawn to. Um, the flying car. You guys know. Um, the Mandela effect, which I think is painfully obvious. And uh, last but not least, uh, time travel. I think that in the event that it would ever be possible, I would be one of those people that would risk it. I really do. I think it's something that a lot of people are interested in. And again, it's not because I want to change what I have done. I don't really have a lot of regrets on my end. I would probably work to change what other people have done who have screwed things up for me by not doing things my way to start with. Because my way, that is to say the right way, is the way that things should be done. Uh, <laughs> maybe I would use time travel to show people that. Maybe if I go back in time enough, I can make common sense, as common as grass blades. As the common tropes of science fiction continue to break into our reality, writes the Daily Mail, from my humanoid robots to self-driving cars, there's one concept that is seemingly remaining beyond our grasp, uh, time travel. But jumping through time might not be possible after all, according to one astrophysicist. By the rules of theoretical physics, certain conditions exist that allow for the construction of elaborate wormholes, which could transport humans back to different eras. Scientists have yet to discover the conditions needed to travel back in time, and a construction of a system large enough for humans certainly won't be easy, but there's nothing forbidding it in the laws of theoretical physics. This is explained by astrophysicist Ethan Siegel of Lewis and Clark College. I talked about it in a Forbes blog, starts with a big bang. Now, what he's saying here is that there's nothing that we know that it is possible. There's nothing in what we know that would imply that it's impossible to travel time. The circumstances, the catalyst, the road that would make that happen, however, is not something that science is currently able to do. Backward time travel would rely on the elusive counterpart to the known positive energy, positive or zero mass particles found throughout the universe. Yet negative mass energy particles, which have long been theorized, have not yet been found. And if this negative mass energy exists, and I'm not one that believes it does, people, then creating both a supermassive black hole and the negative mass energy counterpart to it, while then connecting them, should allow traversable wormholes, uh, single rates. Um, I, I don't think when this when this happens, when, when it's actually able to become a reality, I think uh, you're going to find that it's done probably through magnetics. I don't think it's going to be done through this uh, dark matter or dark energy. I'm not a real big believer in that. It said the wormhole could be constructed in a way that allows one end to remain nearly motionless while the other moves at almost the speed of light. Now, that probably will need to be done regardless of how the construct of it happens. But it would be a very interesting topic because I think there's a lot of people that would be able to benefit from it. And I know there's other people that say that it would be the road to ruin, but I don't, I don't buy that myself. Because for one thing, people will be going back in time so often that that the worry that you're going to step on the first person wouldn't happen. It would just be one separate state or one separate reality that was not ruined. Because we know there are many realities, countless realities, all laid on top of each other. Neville Goddard called them states, although there are some holes in his theories too. So that entering such a tunnel could then theoretically allow a person to jump back through time. Siegel imagines a scenario in which the destination is 40 light years away, and after the passage of one year, the fast-moving end of the wormhole would have aged 40 years, while only a year would have passed on the other side. If 40 years ago someone had created such a pair of entangled wormholes and sent them off in this journey, it would be possible to step into one of them today in 2017 and wind up back in Earth at the month of the other time, back in 78. The only issue is that you yourself couldn't have been at the location back in 1778. You needed to be there with the other end of the wormhole or traveling through space to try and catch up to it. 
some holes in this still, but I think it's interesting. Do I think it's going to happen at some point? Yes, friends, I, I do. I, I honestly do believe that, or rather wholeheartedly. I have a, a couple other things that I want to get to before I get off here. Um, two more, actually. Uh, my new hero. How many of you have heard about the Mad Pooper? If you haven't, don't tune out because you're going to cherish her. She's somebody, and I've written about her for the, on the conservative Daily Post. She is somebody who goes running through neighborhoods, pulls down her pants, and takes a number two on people's property randomly. The first person that caught her thought that uh, it was simply some kind of an emergency and that the person would be so embarrassed that they'd never see them again. But the mad pooper has returned many times, as it were. And uh, now people are interested in trying to find out who she is. There's some kind of sick fetish with her. And I've been following it because I guess I'm kind of a sick person. Cops hunt for suspect pooping on neighborhood lawns. No, it's not Fido. It's in the New York Post. Park is getting crappier by the day. Orchard Park residents have a mad pooper on their hands. One woman has called cops about a delinquent defector stinking up her lawn, and someone placed an ad warning the foul feces fiend to quit it, the Buffalo News reported. To the person jogger who is pooping on our lawns in the village of OP, stop, the anonymous ad in Orchard Park Penny Saver reads. It's great if she reads the Penny Saver. Multiple, I've never heard of it, multiple homeowners have been victims and are determined to catch the pooper in the act. We have installed trail cameras. That's great. That's just awesome. We have installed trail cams to identify you, the ad reads. Or that just means she's going to wear a mask. Thanks for the warning. Should have given it the dumb of the day. Orchard Park police also received a complaint last month from a woman who said that she found feces and tissue paper more than, an hour, more than once outside her home and that she thinks the stinker may be a jogger, cops said. Police have had to deal with mad pooper calls before, though they usually involve Buffalo Bills games at the New Era Field, they said. I don't know why, but that's fine. Somebody who knows, leave it in my comment line. I'll send you something free. If the culprit is caught, they could face possible public lewdness or exposure charges. And in September, Colorado's mad pooper became an international sensation when mom Kathy Buttle and her kids caught the still-identified jogger mid-squats on their lawn. And friends, that brings us to what you all are waiting for. You guys know you love it. That's why I give it to you. It is the dumb deal of the day. All right, guys, I want to remind you as we go into the dumb deal of the day and we play our dumb deal music loudly, boldly, and proudly that uh, this is listener supported. And I also want to remind you that the dunce cap of the month, which supporter is great for, will be happening soon. I was supposed to do it today, but I'm having some trouble getting the mail because the person that is helping me has proven to be rather unreliable and it cost me a fortune when I try to do it. But believe me, it will be coming, even if I have to double it up for uh, February, which looks like it could possibly be the case. Fear not. All right, guys, we're going to go straight into it before we jump out here. A woman runs herself over with her own car. I told you it was the dummy of the day. This is from our uh, Click Orlando. She was trying to escape a cat attack, say troopers. I guess she didn't know how to just kick or smack the thing. I mean, I'm not in favor of animal abuse, but I'm not in favor of running myself over with my car either. Um, a woman said a cat jumped into her car and attacked her as she was trying to escape the feline's fury. She was run over by her own vehicle as it rolled in reverse, according to officials at the Florida Highway Patrol. The woman said she had left her car parked in the grass in front of the house on Magnolia Avenue in West Coca on Friday evening. She was preparing to drive off when the cat pounced into the car and attacked her. Some troopers have said this here. In an attempt to escape the cat's claws, the woman got out of the vehicle, forgetting that it was in reverse, because she's an idiot. That's why she's getting the dummy of the day. It is very unusual to have an animal leap into a car and bite somebody like this and then get run over by your own car. The car rolled into the street and did strike a parked vehicle as well, according to Channing Taylor, FHP lieutenant. Trooper said the car rolled over the woman, leaving her with critical injuries. The video of the scene showed the woman on this stretcher as first responders transported her to a medical center. Now, I'm sorry that she got gravely injured. I really am. But I mean, when you are that dumb, it is hard to say 
exactly what can happen to you. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. I'm about to sign out, but I see your listeners there who are going to make sure you hit share, hit like, hit subscribe, and please donate, even if it's just a couple dollars, to the correct views at hotmail.com so that I can get out of this damn room and back into my studio. Good night, friends. God bless you. Thanks for listening. It means a lot.